Hello everybody, I'm Aaron Heselhurst. Welcome to the program. Of course, always a pleasure having you with us. We'll talk very shortly uh, about Facebook and uh, possible, uh, the possibility of more shares hitting, the, uh, hitting the, the market. But first, let's talk about there is certainly no let up in this ongoing uh, or the ongoing troubles, certainly for the banking industry. That's because US authorities have confirmed that they've issued subpoenas to seven banks over claims that they manipulated the LIBOR interest rate. Now, don't be put off by that. That's the, the rate that banks set among themselves every day. It's the rate at which they lend to each other and borrow from each other. It's also the rate that is used on thousands of different financial products. It deals with trillions of dollars every day. Now, the banks that have been summoned include Citigroup, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase, HSBC, Royal Bank of Scotland and UBS. So the story is certainly ongoing. Let's get more. Chris Roebuck joins us from the Cass Business School. Chris, good to have you with us. And Chris, Thank you. we knew this was probably going to happen because last month yep. Barclays put its hands up. It paid a fine of something like $430 million dollars. Um, for, for this manipulating the, mm -hmm. the rate. And of course, I guess you can't fix or manipulate a rate without others on side. Uh, to some degree, yes, but, but you could also just put in a rate that was for your own benefit. But what this clearly shows is that actually this was across the board. This was American banks, this was European banks, this was British banks. To some degree, a significant proportion of those who were asked for their interest rates were at it, so to speak. I think it's also worth saying, how did this go so horribly wrong? People need to remember that this particular process started in the days before electronic trading, before computers, when within the city of London, everybody acted with integrity. My word is my bond. So the easiest way to find out from a bank what their interest rates were was to ring them up. And that's what happened. All the banks were rung up. They gave their figures. The top and bottom ones were cut out and the rest were average. That was absolutely perfect for those sort of environments, but when the city was deregulated, when everyone was in there to maximise profit, it was a process that was ripe for abuse, and that's what happened. Uh, sure did. Um, what happens now, though? OK, so I'm assuming all of these seven banks, are they, they present documents, they mm -hmm. give testimony, yeah. but given that Barclays pretty much put its hands up last month, um, do, do, do you think we could see some of these other banks follow, basically? I suspect that as Barclays has put its hand up, and, and maybe that wasn't necessarily the best tactic to be the first one to be in the dock, that they are potentially going to say, yes, we were involved, we hold our hands up and, and we'll take the punishment. But one of the interesting points here is also, you know, this is one of the US regulators investigating something that happened in London. And as we saw from the Standard Chartered case, there are questions about the number of regulators in the US that are investigating different things, some of them the same things, four, five or even more regulators. Then you have the FSA in London investigating this. And the question is, actually, who is the regulator who takes precedence? Can any regulator have a go at any bank about anything? Does it allow the American regulators to take action in the US for something that happened in London? There are all sorts of questions that this poses. There sure is. And, of course, questions that we'll continue trying to get answers to. Indeed. Chris, great stuff from you. Thanks very much. We'll Thank see you. you very soon. Chris Roebuck joining us from the Cass Business School.